tuned in to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. Join us now on another exciting metaphysical journey. Relax, tune in, drop out and take a seat by the fire as we explore new realms and possibilities. This is Magenta Pixie. You can find me at magentapixie.weebly.com. But now, here is Zany Mystic and guest. Enjoy the show. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. I'm your host, Lance White. Tonight, I'm delighted to welcome back Anelia Benz to the show to share her perspective on the current energies and whatever else we decide we want to talk about. In January 2010, she received a request from Source to go public. This began the establishment of a free information source at www.ascension101.com. Thousands have been deeply moved and triggered by the paradigm-shifting first video. Since, she has continued to work behind the scenes with lightworkers and public figures to raise the vibration of the planet. This is taking many forms, from newsletters, podcasts, tools, workshops, events, and courses. She is presently serving on the Awaken Council, developing the new paradigm in partnership with others. She is presently working on a two-day event in November. So let's welcome Anelia back to the show now. Hi, Anelia. How are you? Are you there? Hi, Lance. I'm really excited. I'm really oh. excited. I don't know. It's like, oh, my God, we're going to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I'm glad to hear that you're excited. You know, usually you have such a, a calm, even, you know, you, you maintain this kind of demeanor that you hold in, uh, hold yourself at kind of a certain level. And it's great to see you excited. <laughs> I think this time that we're at at the moment is so exciting. And a theme that we're going to be talking about on air for a few days and it's so in your face right now and, and you're absolutely right. It's, it's all about integrity and, oh my gosh, it's just there, you know? It's, I saw that, yeah, absolutely. I'm very excited. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, one of the things that uh, concerned me this last week and I wrote to you about it, I, I send you links to things that I think are pertinent, um, I follow the uh, the articles on the um, now it's going to leave me in my mind. Uh, anyway, I will think of where I where these articles come from, but it's a good source. And anyway, they uh, indicated that there are twenty eight uh, twenty eight or more uh, reasons to be concerned or to be aware of what's going on with the nuclear uh, situation in uh, Fukushima. Oh, right. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. And, uh, you know, we know that the Earth is a being. She is, uh, she, she is both the sexes, so, you know, but predominantly she is a feminine being who uh, we are part of and that she can probably only take so much nuclear, uh, you know, energy uh, going off, and that there are uh, elites and probably ETs and multidimensionals and interdimensionals uh, on both sides of the fence, the dark and the light, but the mainly on the dark, that are doing kind of a scorch and burn operation on planet Earth. And that includes most of the false flag events and the natural events that are no longer natural. It's conceivable <laughs> that they never were natural. So um, I sent that all over the place, and um, and a friend of mine wrote back and said, you know, I refuse to go into fear over this. Uh, you know, we first of all we don't know that this is going to be end up being a bad thing. Oh, it's Waking Times, by the way, you guys. Waking Times has some wonderful articles on uh, spiritual growth, metaphysical stuff, all kinds of interesting and out of the box thinking. So I kind of saw both sides of it, and yet there is evidence that, you know, the radiation tickers are turning to the yellow on the West Coast. It's, uh, Los Angeles is the hardest hit. We know that the human species and the animal species probably can't survive uh, 
the continued uh, spilling of high levels of radiation into the oceans. And the oceans have been so fouled already. I mean, there, there's uh, like some kind of 75-mile island of junk that's been dumped in there. Uh, we know that uh, the mafia has been hired to dump various toxic waste and nuclear waste, and they take their ships out, uh, no names of shipping lines, of people we might know of uh, will be mentioned, but they take their ships out, and rather than dumping them as per contract, of course, they dump all this toxic waste right into the ocean. And all of this beautiful life and, you know, is, is this chain of life that we're in is being not just nibbled away, it is being voraciously consumed as are we. So I wanted to uh, kind of start there and get your perspective on this and see what you feel about it from a higher dimensional perspective. I lived in England. There was this river that was, used to go through the city where I lived, and it was extremely polluted when I first got there, really, really polluted. No, you couldn't, I don't think there was even fish that would live in it because it was so polluted. Mm-hmm. By the time I left, I think it was, I don't remember how many years later, because I actually grew up there, so it was many, many years later, the, the river was clean, yeah, because people became conscious about it, mm. and the companies and industries and farms that were, at the time there was no culture and there was no knowledge about what it was really doing, all these mm. chemicals and things. Um, they went in and they cleaned up their act. And by the time I left that city, there were fish, uh, edible fish in the river. Oh. Wow. You know, so when we look at it in from that perspective, we can see that we can actually reverse stuff. Yeah, nuclear waste lasts many, 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 many years. In 1985, I think it was, that we had the Chernobyl incident. Massive, right. massive radioactive cloud covered in the entire, I mean, went right across Europe, dumping radiation, really right. high levels of radiation all over Europe. Yeah? Uh, I was there at the time I had a new baby, Daniela. You, you know Daniela, right, my daughter? Oh, yes, beautiful. She, oh, I love Daniela. She was, yeah, she was tight. She was just a few days or months old. She was tiny, and she was right uh, there. Uh, and I remember... Waking up one day, and I wasn't into the news, but I woke up and I looked outside. I closed all the windows, all the doors, and I wouldn't take her out, even though I used to take her out. And then we heard later on that that day was when the cloud had come over. You know, it was all wow. very hush hush and silent and stuff. But the news came out, and then the the local government sent out troops, uh, people, and armies with um, cleaning equipment, cleaning out all the sandboxes in all the parks and washing down houses, all the public houses, the streets and everything, washing them with something that would help out with the chemical, the, the radiation. Yeah? Uh-huh. I think our, our city was particularly badly hit. Is that these things will happen. They happen right now because of our society. You know, we don't have a a spray that will anti anti radiation spray, <laughs> <laughs> and the other things are happening. Yes, it is true they are happening. We are all going to die, and how we're going to die is actually quite irrelevant. What we have yeah. to concentrate on, in my opinion, is how we're going to live. Are we going to live in fear? Oh, again, in the UK, we were, um, especially in the city I lived, we were. Point blank, one of the... If there was a nuclear war. I don't know if you remember the 80s and the late 70s, but that was very real, that every single day it was uh. a possibility that there might be a nuclear war between Russia and the United States. Oh, yes. And, and oh, UK. Yes. And the UK was the right next door. It was like the, the areas where it was going to hit. It was literally <laughs> all of it. We were going to be right in the center of it. Huh. And I think it was very regularly during the day uh, they would tell tell you in the news and the radio and everywhere they were they did uh, 
thing would go off just to test. They would test <laughs> right. the nuclear alarm. Right. No, and it was a huge, enormous sound. Yeah. Oh, I know. I can, I, yeah, giving me the chills oh. now. Yeah, I, I can't remember the, name, the sound of it. And yeah. ooh, uh, it was like, oh, uh, it was very, very loud all over the city. Yeah. yeah? All yeah. over. And that was just, you would send your physical body into fear. Because you yeah. didn't know whether they were testing it out or whether that said the bombs were coming, and um, and it was a way. It was a way that every single month, what fear in the population would be amped up, really, really powerfully. Uh-huh. So anybody who is, and then the entire country, of course, would go down in vibration really quickly. Yeah, so it was like it would keep the vibration low in a very steady, ongoing way. Yeah. Yes. Now, at the present time, we're going through a stage where there is a huge awakening around the planet. Everybody's waking up, really. To some certain extent, not, not like complete, but to a certain degree, everyone is waking up. Even if to say the pharmaceutical industry are mafiosos and they have of interest with regards to health, that should be outlawed. You know, it's all that type of stuff. People are really waking up to all sorts mm-hmm. of things. And the fear things that have we, they've been playing us with are no longer working. So they're really going for it now. They're going oh, for yeah. some really big, massive stuff that not just will give fear, but will actually take people out. And they're saying, yeah, there is, I can sense that there is isn't some, something about radiation happening here. I'm in the West Coast. And... I don't really like going out anymore. I feel that sense. I don't care. I'm going to die. This physical body is going to die. Right. And it doesn't really matter how it dies. But if I'm going to live in fear, not going outside, that does matter. Yeah. yeah. Right. That matters. Right. right. Anyway, I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> Well, no, you, you, no, that's really good because uh, the the fear is really what does the harm. It's not yes. the radiation uh, so much. Exactly. The radiation exactly. and anything can be healed. Uh, there are quantum devices that uh, we know now work on levels that uh, are imperceptible, that clear chemtrails, that remove fluoride from the water, that uh, do this and that and the other thing, and, and even can clear up uh, atomic waste. And for all we know, I think a lot of us believe that there are advanced civilizations that are keeping an eye on us that uh, have technologies that they could share when we stop acting like the barbaric, uh, selfish, greedy, uh, uh, self-destructive entities with no consciousness. And uh, I know... (laughs) There are many, uh, most of the people who listen to these shows here at BBS Radio are not those people. And so, in a sense, we're kind of preaching to the choir. You know, we're in the, we're in the church and we're preaching mm-hmm. to the choir. But we also need to take responsibility and stop looking to those people that are on the front lines, like yourself or myself or, you know, uh, the people that we have traditionally looked to for good information and truth and hold them up on a pedestal because many of those people don't have integrity and they're just basking in their own limelight and they have enormous egos in uh, in the dissemination of their information. So uh, we need to be the change and we need to start thinking what we can do, not looking to other people to tell us what to do. They, exactly. they never tell us, I, they never have ideas. You notice how uh, some of the major players that uh, are announcing all of these horrible things that are going on, which are accurate and true, and, and probably far more than that, never seem to come up with solutions. That's right. <laughs> Isn't that strange? They, ne- they just, yeah. I mean, you know, and I'm not criticizing David Icke in, in this moment, but he can talk for six hours to an audience and mesmerize them. I've been to them. And, you know, you can walk away thinking, oh, my God, there's so much there. And, and you, fa- you found out so much more, and you've gone so much further down the rabbit hole. And, oh, my God, and then, and then you start digging and you find out more. But it doesn't provide any solutions. I know that he does provide uh, offer uh, alternatives, but 
we need to start thinking of solutions to things and taking action on our own. Uh, one example of that was, I, I, had, I thought about this as an example. Uh, we're coming up on October 31st through November 6th, and my friend Mahala Gale, who's a Virgo, wrote a great planet alert for the month of, I guess, November, about this period of time. And she says, she talks about where Halloween comes from and All Hallows Day and how the spirits are released. We know that the elite uh, and those who run them, the managers, who run the managers here on the planet, uh, they use those dates to really throw the book at us, uh, metaphysically, uh, spiritually, from the astral planes, from other dimensions, uh, with entities and this and that, and, and, and incarnate spirits. So we know that this is a pattern. So why can't we, as uh, being responsible for our planet, light workers and metaphysicians and spiritual people and religious people, it doesn't really matter, who know the value of smudging and saging and using a sea salt, which absolutely demolishes, uh, you know, dark entities. Uh, if we all did that at least once during that week period and create an international global smudging and purification week, you know, October 31st to November 6th, and we take responsibility for ourselves, we smudge our houses, we cleanse, we purify, and then those who want to, could very easily say, look, you're my, you're my mom, or you're my sister, you're my aunt, you're my friend. I love you dearly. Let me just do this for free. It won't cost you anything. I'm just going to want to come over and smudge and sage. I know you don't believe in all this crap, and you think I'm wacky and a new age kook, but just let me do it. And, and you know, somebody will say, oh, yeah, come on over. We'll, we'll have lunch, and then you can sage all you want. Uh, we'll have wine afterwards, and just create a ball that rolls that halts or puts a dent in the invisible realms that are attacking us constantly and wearing us down, and we could be doing this all over the world. This could become an annual until, you know, it isn't needed anymore. These things are temporary, but this is just one idea of, of a zillion ideas, and we each have them. Let's generate them and then just act on it. I just announced it on the radio to you and everybody that's listening. And, you know, somebody can take the ball and do something with it. People could have little uh, uh, smudging and salt classes in their house and, and invite all their friends to say, now I want to share something with you and get all their wacky, crazy friends over and have a little party, you know, uh, have some food, have some Yay. whatever you like. <laughs> And make it a fun thing, and then teach everybody, and then hand out some, you know, angelic sage and different kinds of sage and so on, cedar sage. Bring your drums. <laughs> yeah, drumming. Yes, drumming is a good yeah, thing. Right? There's all it's kinds good. of things. Mm -hmm. Dancing, Bell, joyous Bell. things, celebration. Yeah. We yeah. know that the dark can't stand laughter or joy or love or light. Those things are anathema to dark, <laughs> to dark beings. And so, you know, the, the joy, love, light message is, is wonderful, but we also have to be aware of, you know, what we're, why we're doing it, because this world is totally immersed in dark, just like you would take a, a piece of chocolate candy, uh, Almond Joy or something, and dip it in chocolate. Well, the inside's still <laughs> chewy coconut, and there are nuts inside, but, you know, it's covered in darkness. So it's yeah. time for the nuts to wake up, start <laughs> punching through that uh, chewy coconut inside, and then have a metamorphosis and break through the dark outer, outer surface. That's what I say. <laughs> I love it. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, That's anyway. a brilliant idea. And you know, you have a fabulous, yeah, that, but you have a very, very, very important point that when we decimate information, always, always provide a solution, yeah? Because yes. otherwise we're just adding to that fear, the anger, yes. and why are we doing it? Just have a look at it. And the, the way you probably recognize this word from Brand. Are you involved in emotional uh, pornography, or are you involved in... Because if you send stuff out or you're getting enraged or fearful or whatever, reading something and you spread it out, mm. you're indulging. 
yeah. as an addiction. It's called yeah. drama. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. You're doing nothing positive. You're just amplifying what these things were done for in the first place to create fear. Exactly. Now, if you process all your crap first that you get up when, when, that comes up for you when you see these things, and then think of something that you can do, just like these smudge parties. I think they're fabulous ideas. Well, now, if thanks. you're going to hold, uh, if you're going to hold a Halloween party, make yeah. it up. Yes, exactly. Even on Halloween night when the kids sleep, are coming, you know, and all these pass things. out smudge. Give yeah, them a little smudge exactly. stick in their bags, exactly. and they'll go back to their parents and yeah. say, "Mommy, yeah. what's this?" This is, what is this? What do I do with it? And they'll say, well, I don't know. And then, you know, it, it could open up doors to all kinds of things. People will say, oh, it's a smudge stick. Here's how we use it. The directions are on the outside. You burn it and you do. And then here, a little bag of salt. And people will say, well, what is this? You know? So, I mean, these are just ideas that just come to the top of my head. And, you know, here we are. We could probably solve the world's problems in the next 10 minutes with our ideas. But somebody's got to step up to the plate and say, exactly. you yeah. know, that's a great idea. I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm not just going to sit and complain yeah. and be a victim in the world uh, that I can't control I'm going to take action, and even if it just changes one person's life for an instant, that is enough. Yeah, it is. It is enough. It is. And then, as you said, I mean, one of the points that that I wanted to uh, uh, address with you is that of, of victim aggressor. Over the over the thousands and millions of years of incarnations that I'm sure that most of us have had many, more than one incarnation, except for you. <laughs> you came in directly from the right. You're the exception, okay. So you don't count here. But most of us have had <laughs> other incarnations as the other sex, as the evil person, as the dark, as the mad scientist, as the out of control. We've, we've incarnated on other planets, on other galaxies, in other star systems. We've been planets, and we've been stars ourselves. So we have, ha we have all that energy from stepping down through the universe that we incarnated into now. So it is all encoded in our DNA, even if it's being, uh, you know, down... Uh, even if it's being subdued or altered by, you know, the technological devices that we know are there to keep us in control, they are going to fail, and they fail fastest when one person takes initiative. It's always one person, uh, like the person in China who stood up against the cannon. That's an unforgettable moment. Oh, my gosh, yeah. The guy who, uh, in I think it was Iran or something, who set himself—he was a street vendor—and he set himself on fire because he couldn't he couldn't feed his family anymore. They were all getting uh, hit, these little vendors were getting hit up with huge taxes and and having to come up with a lot of money for, you know, the food that they were selling. And he simply set himself on fire, and it started a revolution. So yeah, well, I don't think that that fire. You, I don't <laughs> suggest people do that. Mm -hmm. Because that's kind of a, you know, that's not really a positive uh, resolution to things. But uh, standing up to the uh, domination and control and the technological uh, suppression that's going on and the evil in the world is certainly a viable alternative. And we have to do it ourselves and we think for ourselves. So there's my little sermon for <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then to to move out of the victim aggressor, uh, because this is one another thing that keeps us in fear. Uh, when, once we move into fear, and I heard a bomb outside, or not a bomb. See, I'm saying it was a bomb. It was just a loud noise that sounded like a firecracker, or it could have been a bomb. And I thought, oh, this might be a bomb. Is there, are they starting World War Three? And I started panning. I thought, what are you doing? You know, it's a beautiful night. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Let your dog go out and go pee pee, and then come back. and And it, it it was it was a noise. My interpretation heard bomb, and then my visuals started come up, and I was seeing mushroom clouds. Well, that is how suggestible we are. Yeah. And yes. the dark side and the elite know this, and they use every trick in the book. 
Look at all the advertising that that, uh, is designed to snare us. I mean, this is a maze, an earthly maze, where we have to work our way through it. And we have a lot of help, uh, but sometimes it seems like we're alone when we're in those bushes (laughs) and we're fumbling around looking for our way out and we're lost. So um, the way out is you just look over the maze and say, oh, okay, there, there's where I go. That's all right over there. I have nothing to worry about after all. Mm-hmm. But uh, playing the victim, uh, even p- uh, people that I know who are, you know, well-known uh, in the world uh, sometimes uh, get wrapped up in the idea that the dark are, you know, doing things that uh, and they do do things. I mean, I'm not saying they don't. They can do a lot of things. They have artificial intelligence at their hands, but then so does the light. Uh, they can do things like wreck your car, cause heart attacks, do this and that, take your astral body out for a ride someplace where you don't want to go, uh, and so on and so forth. But um, they're they're getting wrapped only by up agreement. In... Yes, only by agreement. So yeah. This is where we have to use our sovereign free will and assert it and say, no, I do not agree to that. No, I do not agree to chemtrails. There may be chemtrails in the sky, but we can say, no, I do not agree to that. That is not something I agree with. And I just love the way you have uh, have put that out there in such a way that it empowers us. Uh, isn't that one of the things that you you have a whole series of of uh, fear processing exercises, right? Yeah, there's a fear processing exercise. There's all sorts of meditation things and, and tools that people can use in my website. Some of most of and a huge library of information as well on the blog, the the free articles blog. So the stuff is there. So it's, it's just a matter of people using the information and. Now, well, what are some examples? Points that you of made that. Oh, go ahead. Are you there? <laughs> the, the when you yes when you said um what was it that you just said about uh that you can you know even if there's chemtrails or radiation you can reverse those uh, cancer you don't have to get it oh, that is true absolutely this and it's proven now it's scientifically proven that you can change your DNA with your word and you can actually heal your body just by intention. That's already been proven. Yes. 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 As well as... tell you even things like accidents and stuff like that, things that you think, this is it, it's not going to... I'm not going to survive this. Those are also by agreement. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can give you a little example. When I was a teenager... I was, I think I was 16 years old at the time, or maybe 17. Uh, my family and I went camping in the Lake District in England, and they have these mountains there, well, hills, large hills, <laughs> I call them. I, mean, I was born in Chile. They really have mountains in Chile, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you know, everything else is a hill. Anyway, um, but they call them mountains, I believe. Yeah, and I used to like to climb... Without any ropes, it's just one of those where you could just hold with your hands and feet. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what that's called. Anyway, I started climbing, and I went up and up and up and up. I was really high up, and I was nearly at the top of this mountain. And and as I got there, there was no way for me to return back down because of the way that I had climbed. You couldn't go reverse it. Uh And I looked up, and there was this ledge coming over the the side of the mountain to the, to get reach the top and it was a ninety degree ledge, so the edge of it. So I couldn't hold on to the edge, mm. and I stood there and I was really quite tired by now, and I looked at it and I thought, oh, um, okay, so that was a nice, interesting short life. <laughs> I'm going to die now, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> And and I thought, but I'm going to have a go and see if I can do a Spider-Man here and just grab onto, do an anti-gravity something and try and climb through this 90 degree angle, smooth rock ledge to see if I can reach the top. Mm. So I go out and I put my hand on it. I put my hand on it. And I received a message saying, this was stupidity. We're going to help you this time. 
But you're on your own next time. You better think things through right to then plan your climb all the way and not just, you know, do it. Oh, uh, because. Huh. And then I felt my body being lifted, literally lifted in the air and plonked on top of the mountain on the other wow. side of the lift. And I thought, oh, you know, it's like, okay, you know, I dust off the dust, you know, arrange my hair. Da, 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 da. <laughs> You've had a lot of experiences like that, them. haven't you? This whole... I know, yes, I have. And there's this old couple there with binoculars, and they came up running up to me, and they just, oh, my God, oh, my God. They were saying, what, what? So we watched you all the way, and this, that's impossible. What you did, what happened there, what happened? That was impossible. You, there's no way that you could have done that. How did you do that? And I just looked at them and said, what do you mean? He says, well, sorry, we can't. We have, you know, it's like this powerful binoculars. Of course, you could see what happened. Uh-huh. And I said, well... And it was like, like nodding, yeah? Like uh-huh. yeah, and she looked at him and she said, "I told you, I told you, it was in divine intervention. And it was there was no other way. I told you." And she looked at me and said something like, "You must be very special, or that you're very lucky, or you're very well looked after, or something like that." But it felt uh-huh. really like a, a validation of my existence type thing, you know. It felt really cool <laughs> at the time. But please don't do that again. We were so scared for you, and I thought, uh-huh. "Yeah, that's part of it as well," you know. But it, this is just an example of how. Our own agreement and the agreement of what we are here to do. All these things. It's like you go into an airplane. Oh, I've traveled a lot. Yeah, I've traveled a lot in my life. And when I used to go in an airplane with my children and they were scared, I'd say, don't worry about it. This plane is not going to crash because I'm on it. (laughs) Right. And I've always kept that on. I mean, it's always been there. Yeah. On it. Well, you know, you have uh, you 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 seem like such an unimposing and wonderful, loving person. And I've heard you at the meet and greets uh, that you initially were doing here in California say that you know this will take me out and this will take me out, and you just tell people you know these two things, and it, it's it's kind yeah, of like. Absolutely. Yeah, you're, it's almost like I dare you to try, and I know you personally, and I know there have been people who have tried to do that, and they haven't Absolutely. fared so well, have they? No, they haven't, and that's the whole point. I am not making a secret of my vulnerable points, and they're simple. It's very my physical body. Yeah, mm. is my vulnerable point. Uh, if I haven't slept. I'm dehydrated, I'm hungry, you can take me out. Mm-hmm. You can literally take me out very quickly. Pull me into drama and take me out. It's that mm-hmm. simple. Mm-hmm. And yes, there have been people who have helped me, <laughs> helped me and tried to do it. And they did not fare very well because I did not agree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was able to get away. But, I mean, we can talk about these things. And, you know, it's like I've never taken it personally. It's a level of engagement. Right. I'm doing something that this is some people off, and that's okay. Right. That's perfectly fine. I don't... Well, it's kind of like when you confront stop the dark. Me because I don't agree with them stopping me. Right, right. Right. Yeah. And and yeah. you don't have to get it's mad relevant. about it. Now, on the other hand, yeah, there personal. is a place for... Uh, for you know, real anger. Uh, for real anger, when somebody discovers uh, the truth, and I think there's a place for for anger and uh, and and true a true uh, surging of energy through the body. That there is a place for that within human beings. Uh, you've had those moments probably, and you process them. But most people that are still uh, not fully awake are not aware of what's going on around or, you know, what's going on with their lives. And one of the things that I thought we might want to address today, because so many people are looking to the skies now for a final uh, ET landings and our space uh, families to arrive, 
And we know that there are plans that the elite have. Uh, call them what you will. Uh, there are many names for the for the groups that are on and off the world, uh, but they are basically the ones who are running the dark side of the the, the controls have plans and have had plans in place to create a kind of uh, false uh, alien invasion. They have the technology for it. They have technology. They have artificial intelligence. They have all kinds of things that we we just don't even get to hear about. But there is a good possibility that um, they could use the technology of um, these reverse-engineered uh, energy devices, which uh, one of them uh, uh, probably took out uh, the Twin Towers, uh, but it's conceivable that they could use these uh, e- e- these ETs that they've been working with to stage a false invasion and then have them come out and save the world. It kind of, a, you know, the when the wars stop working and we <laughs> ri- re- raise up against that and start to put an end to the killing of our fellow human beings all over the world and innocent people, our own and others, and we realize the true value of a human being is not that we're not expendable. We are each important and special in the universal scheme of things. Then um, they have other little goodies they can pull out of the basket, and this is one of the things. An ET uh landing for instance uh, it could be it could go in a number of different directions it could be the positive ets are showing up and they're not the positive ets uh mm-hmm. it could be a false flag uh of sky thing uh there's now mm-hmm. i just happen to see that there are lakes on one of the moons in saturn uh, we know that these planets are inhabited and that probably there's some kind of holographic projection over them which is an overlay that we're not seeing correctly. So when the blinders come off, we will get to see more clearly. But uh, what do you feel about those subjects? There, that has been on my mind quite a bit the past couple of we- weeks, and um, I think there's something coming up. I do feel that eventually it will be a very positive thing because it will bring an opening and there is an attempt to hijack it. There is an attempt to give people who are not ready for this reality a way out. Yeah? Mm. So it's like a um, out is that false flag, you know, baddies versus goodies, uh, the conquistadors from outer space type um, right, scenario. Right. Yeah, right. the conquistadors. I mean, I can tell you because I came from them. You know. If they weren't very good people, <laughs> they didn't do very good things in, in the Americas, yeah? Right. So some of them did, but the majority didn't. They just took over, exploited, killed, and maimed, and yeah. But it's like we are projecting that on to something else. There is anybody who thinks should pull their head out of the sand, really, honestly. And there's another thing. The technology that all these races have is far, far superior to anything that we as a a society have. Even the stuff that's been hidden from us, because we do have some of the technologies like zero-point energy and all sorts of other things, Mm -hmm. um, like the the, the artificial amplification of uh, healing energies and Mm. reconfiguration energies and all that stuff. We do have those. Yes. However, these these species have had have if they wanted us dead, if they wanted us annihilated, if they wanted us to wipe us out of existence, we would not be having this conversation right yeah, now. Right, that's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. We would not because they're so powerful, powerful. Yes. Yeah? yes. There are certain rules and regulations with regards to planet which haven't had a complete. Uh, access to the expanded awareness which comes immediately before um, glo- uh, space travel and all those type of things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We are in a state where we as a species are coming into that. More and more people are reporting things such as I knew that somebody was going to phone me and the phone rang. 
uh, I thought about an old friend and I met her that day. I was thinking about a song and I started playing it on the television. Mm. All these things. People mm. are more and more reporting these things more and more. And also the sharing of experience, knowing exactly what another person is going through at a certain point, mm. and wondering about it, having the same kind of conversation, each of two people, because they thought about whatever. So those are happening more and more and more. And eventually we will become able to come in and out of a state of collective awareness and collective tapping into the collective knowledge, which in includes all those other species. Mm -hmm. And when we reach that point, then we are part of that family and we will be able to move into our our own power of being able to travel through teleportation and other means, including uh, things with machines, yeah? Yes, 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 yes. We will not be able there, right there. Yeah, exactly. And... uh... The, the stranglehold that is being maintained on all of the major media outlets will break like a dam breaking, and the flood of information will be uh, probably, it's been trickling out slowly, but uh, through the underground uh, movements, you know, through the Internet, but it's just a trickle, and you know, they control the level of consciousness on this planet. If it becomes too high, there are ways that they can... Uh, it's constantly being monitored for its level of vibration. And if the vibration goes up too yeah. hot, too fast, they, they dampen it. If it goes up too slow, they leave it alone. They can play with it all they want. They are extremely powerful uh, beings, uh, multidimensional beings. And... So the whole planet is uh, basically being messed with and has been for probably millions of years. And until people start to realize that this is the case, that we're living in a, uh, we're not, uh, we're not just human. We're we're living amongst we're multidimensional beings that exist on many different levels, and we start tapping into those levels, including as you said, the telepathic abilities that are being damped down, we should be able to communicate and know everything about one another that is transparent, that is deemed transparent. And we're moving into that stage where, as a species, we will be able to do that again. I know we've done it before. And there have been prior civilizations. I know people are talk about Atlantis, Lemuria, Mm -hmm. and Mu, and various other things. But we're going to transcend all of those civilizations because they all fell prey to their own selfishness and to technology. And so we're, we really need to develop the technology of the heart, the brain of the heart. And I think that's where we're going to be able to communicate. That is a safe shelter, at least as long as it doesn't melt down from nuclear radiation <laughs> <laughs> or explode from, you know, fluoride in the water or whatever. But um, yes, yes, they, they we we just don't uh, we don't know. Technology. How, yeah. So. Um, what are some other things that you've seen on the horizon that you would like to share with us during this last 10 minutes or so? Well, we talked about all this technology stuff, and the one piece of technology that everybody's falling over and wants to control is our own human body, ah, our yeah. own human DNA, and our own human capacity to do mm-hmm. and to create we are such a powerful, powerful species. Mm-hmm. Say that perhaps we are even the original creators of the universe because time is like a linear time is an illusion. But that's the type of fear that people or other species have, or those the dark side, or whatever you want to call it, have of us realizing and stepping into. Mm-hmm. That's the knowledge that they're really afraid of, and that's why they keep pumping the stimulation of the ego and the fear and everything else. Yeah. And also that fear of losing one's mind if one goes into the human collective consciousness. Oh, yeah. Which... 
So once we realize that, and one, we each look in the mirror and look at a fabulous piece of technology, advanced uh. technology, this physical body, and it happens all over the planet. There's been, you know, recorded cases. This physical body, the, our human body, can teleport, can levitate, can create currents of electricity that can light up and power uh, appliances, can... Um, Teleport. I guess I said that already. I think it can communicate right. with others telepathically. Bilocate. Heal. Yeah. Bilocate. It can heal, heal instantaneously. Yeah. It can heal others. Yeah. It can uh, change matter. It can move things around. Tele- telekinesis is real. I know. I used to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you... all of these things we can do ourselves. This physical body. That's all we need. That's the technology we need. It's just activating it, using it. And people are scared. They're afraid of that. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So process that fear. Process the fear of yes. people going into your mind. Process the fear of what happens if your neighbor can teleport or can telekinesis stuff across the... Especially you having the power to create or destroy planets. Process that fear. Yes. Because that's the only thing that's stopping us as individuals and as a species. Yes. Yes. I agree with you. I agree with you. And, you know, I've followed uh, reports about the ET presence for decades now, and I have learned that um, there are species of ETs that are absolutely terrified of us because we have a power that we can absolutely, literally destroy them without knowing how we did it or, you know, how to do it. But they they know that they have been destroyed just by a thought from a human being. And so um, some have speculated that a lot of the abductions have been designed to try and dissect us to find out what our where our power comes from. Uh, yeah, I and care. maybe replicate it. <laughs> yeah, I don't really care. I, 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 but to be aware that I have it, you're right. That That is an awesome... Uh, responsibility, and I think that's something that we really need to, as you said, we need to process our fear about being the ones that land on the, you know, the other planet and are what greeted, not by people falling to their feet and worshiping us as gods, but as fellow human, as fellow beings, universal beings of light that truly care about each other and care about the welfare and the empowerment of others and not the destruction of others. Right, right. So you sent me that interview um, by email, I can't remember the Eve and Brand interview, and there was a little line there that said about um, the was talking about that most of the book, the majority of the book, talked about how kind uh, animals work to each other, how they looked after each other, even uh, across species. And there was a tiny little entry about the 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 survival of the fittest. However, the modern man just grabbed that one line out of the book uh-huh. and made it the norm of how we all functioned. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right, right. <laughs> it is not true. That's not how we function. That's right. That's right. Minority. And I that stuff is happening on the planet and all the fear and hate and destruction and murder and rape and all that stuff that's happening. And it's being pumped up on the television and our movies and our yeah. stories and our books and everywhere else in the radio and in the internet, everywhere. You know, little young women trampling puppies to death and stuff like that. And it's all over, all over the internet and everywhere. I'm going to tell you something. I am, and one of the capacities that I am have personally, and I believe that every one of us has, because you can pull into it and you can resonate with mm. the energies that every single human being on the planet is experiencing at the moment. And I can tell you without a doubt that you can put all the fear all the destruction, all the hate and anger into one little cup and into the sea. And the sea is pure, absolute mm. pure love. Wow. All the love of those new fathers holding their babies, of their mothers 
um, uh, holding their children, of couples coming together, of strangers looking at each other and just smiling in the street, of yeah. cuteness and beauty and flowers and butterflies. Oh, yeah. To clean up parks, to clean up their cities, to start uh, edible gardens in their neighborhoods. That is the majority. That Just step into it and you'll find it. That is 98% of the energy of the planet is that way. We are made that way. We are made to experience and be each other. If somebody smiles, you smile back. You can't help it. You'll smile back. Right. Yes? If you hear somebody laughing, really, really beautiful belly laugh, you'll take 30, 40 seconds and you're going to be giggling. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. We're crying. We will cry with them. We are each other. We're not separate. We are each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, beautifully said. Very beautifully said. And, uh, you know, the, it's the illusion that's held up, and the technology amplifies it. So, oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and of course, watching television, uh, we, you know, I don't need to say anything about that, but I'm going to, uh, <laughs> you know, get rid of those damn boxes. You know, you're giving your money away to the corporations that are simply feeding you fear and uh, commercials and propaganda, and it's like, it's an over, I mean, the brain can't process that much information. I, I can't watch, I can't even watch a 30 minute television show any longer. I don't even have the capacity to do that. I don't have the, you know, I can't get a television show because I don't subscribe to any channels. But um, I I do rent movies. I love to rent movies. And sometimes I rent movies that have some violence in it. One of the best ones I saw recently was um, done by the Wachowski brothers, and it is uh, Cloud Atlas. And it's a wonderful film. And, um, but, you know, even in the beginning of DVDs now, they're advertising this and advertising that, and it's like it goes into five minutes and six minutes, and pretty soon, you know, and on the Internet, have you noticed that, how you just can't, you'll watch a video and you've got to watch it, sit there now and, and listen to a commercial before you even watch um, a video? Yeah. And yeah. then now, and then yeah. you, you're, you're, you're holding your mouse, waiting for the moment when you can click it off so you don't have to hear the whole thing. <laughs> We're like trained rats, yeah. and that's how they think of us. You know that you know the people that run these uh, media mogulompias. <laughs> uh, you know we're just little mice to be toyed with, and uh, we're not. We're powerful beings of light, and we're gods and goddesses all. And we could probably, if we truly unite. Uh, telepathically and as beings, as human beings, uh, we need to put aside our differences and stop fighting with each other. That's where they keep us at um, each other's... That's how they keep us separated from having conscious unity. Would They keep us in disunity. So Mm -hmm. you have Christians that are fighting with other Christians about this sect or that sect or who did what. It's ridiculous. It's just programming. It's just programming, and we're programmed like robots to respond. And once you just start looking around and see, you know, is that my thought, or is that something that was put there by someone else, or something I just accepted without questioning or verifying? A lot of the stuff that comes in, we just uh, accept it, and that goes in as if it's the truth. And we need to verify the truth for ourselves, every little bit of it. And if we don't agree with it, then, as you said, um, I don't agree to that. I don't agree to chemtrails. I don't agree to wars. I don't agree to hate and violence and and uh, greed and uh, murder and and so on and so forth. Is I don't give my consent to that. So, uh, well, I just seem to. <laughs> you got me on a roll tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, you know, I let you say more, and then you, you <laughs> and I just kind of got up on my bully pulpit. So, in the last few minutes here uh, that that you have to share, um, is just talk about anything you'd like to about your upcoming event that's in November, 
Uh, let's, I would love to hear again about that. Let's get a plug in. Oh my gosh, and you're going to be there. Well, yes, I am. Yeah, uh, you're going to be there. Yes, I'm going to be there. You're sponsored. <laughs> I know. It's I don't know how long the Zini it's Mystic can hold up for six hours of, of uh, sitting, but <laughs> we'll have to bring him a special well, chair. <laughs> a rocking chair. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that'll be funny. We'll have you yeah, know. well, I will, I'm going to talk to you about that. I I have some <laughs> I have some special needs. Yeah. <laughs> the but, thing uh, is, so tell us about that event before we have to sign up. So we I know have people can sponsor us. It would, can you say that again? I we I didn't hear that. Oh yeah, sir. I think there's some delay in the in the in the, in the chat or <laughs> something. That we've we made it so that people can sponsor other people going, yeah. Oh, okay, and good. yeah, and we have at the moment we have thirteen sponsorships, fully paid sponsorships. Wow. Well, or partly paid with people who are being sponsored. Some of them are actually sending some of their own fees so that they can uh, some of the money sponsorship. Wow! And how many people are you have? Do Already, you have uh, you're we breaking. have at the moment we have thirty seven. Wonderful. Wonderful. We have thirty seven. So and if you need sponsorship, go yeah. and apply because we have spaces. Wonderful. You know, that that can start a that's another idea that you are 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 putting into effect that can open the doors to shared resources without putting a name on it. It's just sharing the energy that we have. Some people have more of that green stuff than other people do, and uh, they can open their hearts and their wallets and share that energy with other people and do. So that's coming up on November. Exactly, and then they're... Okay, can you say that again? I couldn't hear you. Yeah, they're completely connected then to the energy of exchange because then they are connected. They would be there in energy, yeah? Uh -huh. If they sponsor right. somebody else, the other person would represent them energetically. So the, it's really a massive, um, it's fabulous. This unity energy is fantastic. It's something else. Yes. Yeah, right, to get all the information under events, and it's ascension101.com. So go there. Get your ticket or get sponsored. It's like we have spaces. <laughs> a wonderful. For sponsorship. Yeah. Wonderful. And that's November 6th, uh, 16th and 17th? Yes. Okay, good. Good. Because I have two weeks to do my push-ups. <laughs> yes. Well, but Amelia, we it's been a wonderful time ch chatting with you again tonight. I always love talking to you. And uh, even though I did all the talking this time, <laughs> I can let we you talk, We both talked. <laughs> yeah, we we did okay. We shared the stage pretty well. And we work well together. And I look forward to seeing you on the 16th and 17th. And next week, I have Andrew Norton Weber on uh, my show, who's going to be talking about two distilled water oh, conferences okay. that are coming up the week after yours. And the week after that. So there's a lot of exciting stuff going on. And uh, people, uh, stay tuned to BBS Radio. Come back and, and listen to my show uh, when I have a guest. <laughs> I've been kind of <laughs> on a little vacation here. So uh, thank you, Anelia, so much for all you do. You are just a treasure on Earth. I, oh, I just love you, you dearly. Yeah, me too. I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night, and good night, everybody, and good night, Anelia. Good night.